Hello, I am Lux, and in some universes, I'm known as the Friendly Dragon. <laughs> and I'm Ember, not the dragon. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 24, Father Knows Beast. I wonder if they met at Professor Xavier's school. <laughs> That's a good one. So we hate him. And almost as soon as he showed up. Uh, pretty much instantaneous. It wasn't the he's evil of Cozy Girl. It was the, oh, he's a manipulative jerk. Yeah, I don't think he was really trying to ma be manipulative at first. And yes, he was. At first? Yes. I thought he was just being an idiot. I'm talking about when he came out of the ground after he crashed. Okay, yeah, in the first, like, 30 seconds. But he succumbed to Spike very quickly. Yeah, I'm talking about, like, that first part, at first he was just being an idiot. Then, once he starts thinking about things, that whole, also, dragons take advantage of people, but not in that way. Dragons like to crush things that are weaker than themselves. Not manipulate them into getting them stuff. I also kind of hope that he actually was Spike's dad, so we can get a really nice grounding of, you are not where your genes come from. Even though your genes do determine certain things, like what your sexual preference is and how long your hair is going to be, what color, stuff like that. But you are not where your genes come from if you're adopted. You are who raised you. And you're not where your genes come from even if you're with your natural parents. If you come from 20 generations of farmers and you want to go into science... You can go into science and it doesn't even have to do anything with farming. No. Though science and farming can get along quite well. They do. They do. I mean, the other problem with science right now is the fact that farmers can't fix their own tractors now. Thank you, copyright. Literally, it's copyright and DRM that are stopping farmers from working on their own tractors. Come on, John Deere. Oh my god. <laughs> but back on topic to how much we don't like sludge. Yeah. Uh, I like how at first I was like, oh yeah, Sludge. And you were like, that's not his name. I was thinking Sledge because of how hard he hit the ground. <laughs> I didn't think of it that way. That's that, Yeah. Uh, I wonder if he hurt his arm before or because of the crash. Hard to say because all we saw was this flaming meteor falling out of the sky. And he looked really beat up, like more than he would if he came out of the ground. I mean, his wings were torn. It was a lot of damage for a high-speed crash landing. Like you could almost believe his story about being in a jail. No, no, I couldn't. Like I said, like you could almost. You're almost as like, you know. <laughs> no, no, because he named places and the punnings were like, yeah, we've been there. He's like, have you guys ever heard of this place? Nope. That's because I just made it up. Okay, so here's what happened. Though it does sound like a cool concept that actually might be plausible in the outside world of Equestria. Outside of Equestria, I should say. Dragon hunters and stuff like that. Also, the egg in that flashback was not the same shape. No, it didn't look anything like Spike's egg. But considering the guy's not Spike's father... Also, I couldn't quite pick up on it, but there was a slight difference in the art style when he was doing the flashback stuff. It was a little bit like when we have the overly simplified ones for some of the stories, but it didn't go quite that far. It still retained a lot of the smoothness and stuff like that from the standard animation, which I'd like to state once again, if you watch a season one episode and the current episode, you're like, wow, because you don't really see the contrast of how good the animation is now. At least you go back and watch one of the first episodes and you're like, whoa. Also, apparently there was a marathon going on on one of the um, sites on Equestria Daily where they were streaming every season up to the finale of this one. Mm, that would have been handy to know earlier. Yeah, well, I found out about it like when they were already into season five. And I was really surprised. I'm like, when was this posted? <laughs> you would think it would have shown up in our feeds. Well, it was kind of a fan thing on Equestria Daily. I don't think we get a lot in our feeds about Equestria Daily. I used to before my phone died. But back on topic to this guy being a jerk. You want to throw him off of a cliff into an ice pool or something? Because you can't do it in the lava. Dragons are fireproof. So 
no, just no, because he's really playing up the, oh, my arm, ow, and basically trying to be as lazy as possible, and all the ponies are basically tricking him into strengthening himself and proving he's well. That was, that was great. I love Pinkie Pie with the dessert cart. All the stuff with Pinkie Pie in that montage was golden, especially the last part where she deliberately walks past his room with the cart and then just starts only Pinkie Pie could outrun a dragon without trying and then purposely hit the table just right to land everything in front of her and then she crosses her arms and well, crosses her hooves and just sits there and goes, oh, there you are. <laughs> yep, and everyone's cheering because, yay, you're fully recovered. Oh, dang, now I need an excuse to stay because I like these ponies waiting on me, claw and hoof. I just realized it's also them taking a trope and twisting it a little bit because there's those tropes in a lot of sitcoms where one person hurts themselves and actually is hurt, but they heal and they're better, but they still pretend to be hurt so they can get waited on. Because they're enjoying the treatment. Kind of funny. It reminds me of, of an episode of Steven Universe. Yeah, yeah. Need to get back into watching that. Good thing this season's almost over. And uh, there comes the army of uh, fans with uh, torches and pitchforks, because how dare we want the season to end? Uh, I'm going to go get the marshmallows. <laughs> I mean, what else am I going to do with fire? Make s'mores, of course. Why are you looking at me like that? It's an angry mob. You got to do something with them. The end was also worth it. Very much so. Though, I didn't see all of this scene, because I was covering my face for a good chunk of this episode. But that was painful with Twilight and Spike. It was supposed to be painful, because they've been together Spike's entire life. And the animation that looked like an x-ray, and her heart... Breaking. <laughs> like, yeah... Yeah, because those faces, you're not my real parent. Ooh, yeah. Every parent who has brought a child into their household that was not theirs by birth has heard that at some point, I am sure. Yeah. Ow. And I love how Spike came back in and Twilight was like immediate, like comforting too, of like, he couldn't have been your father. It was a nice comfort, but it's like, like I said before at the beginning, he could have been his father. And I would have been perfectly okay with that because your genes don't determine your personality. And the coloring was close enough that I'm like, well, I could see that. I'm not buying it, but I could see that. Because to us, it was pretty obvious in this episode that, yeah, the way they're playing him, not his father. If you were going to play it this way, it would like be best to almost introduce that at the start. Because if he was really his father, and he was actually looking for him... It would have come up from the beginning. Especially when he sees two young dragons that could possibly be his in Ponyville, and he heard that this is where his offspring is. The first thing he would do is try to figure out some way, like, oh, two young dragons around when... Ah, one of these two could be them. So questions and stuff like that. And then you could do the whole, oh, this is, this is cozy. I'm going to try to live here now. Forget taking my son back to the Dragonlands. I'm going to move in with him. What else would you like to go over in this episode? Ah, uh, the fun little montage of trying to do stuff on Spike's list. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that, that's fun, especially at the very beginning. I got a small list. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that is not a small list at all. I mean, yeah, we can do this right now. And how we prove that Sledge has got nothing. He has no actual emotional interest vested in Spike. Yeah, not at all. I, I do like the fact that like the first, this is going back just a little bit to the beginning, you know, right before the opening uh, musical part of like, I made a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, dragons don't really use pillows. And Spike's so like, they don't? I like pillows. <laughs> very comfy, but also very flammable. And to go back to the very beginning, well, both beginning and near the end, I like how Smolder keeps helping Spike. I like Smolder from, like, the start, but she's just become 
so well filled out with the um, personality and everything. And it's just, they're adding nice layers to her. And it's great. It's going to mm-hmm. be really interesting to see what they do with the Student 6 next season. Because supposedly next season is the final season of this series. So it's going to be real interesting what they decide to pack into season 9. Especially if they are allowed to do the full 26 episodes. And with it actually being the planned ending as opposed to, oh, nope, you got to stretch it out. Because, you know, sometimes that happens. Like uh, the original Avatar The Last Airbender. They went all out on the season one finale and they're like, wait a minute, we got greenlit for another season? Shoot. That actually happened to the first season of the original Avatar as well? I thought it only happened with Legend of Korra. They might have gotten the green light notice sooner, but if you look at the season one finale compared to the season two finale, that's why the battle with the Water Tribe and the Fire Tribe was so epic and that whole huge spirit thing because they had more planned. But they didn't think they were going to get to do it. Okay. That is different than how Korra went about. Because Korra, they were like, basically, yeah, you get one season for this. And they were like, oh, okay. Wrote it just for one season. And then went, can we get two more? What? Oh, we didn't quite design it like that. Well, we want two more. You're going to do it, right? Like, yeah, sure. Here's our budget. Uh, Nickelodeon had no idea what they were doing with that. No, and they damaged it so much. Okay, off. Yeah, yeah, subjects. I was like, I was trying to pull it back. I was just like, I want to finish that one last thing and then right back into the MLP. And... Oh, the whole very obvious thing of, yeah, dragons don't have feathers. Turning, twisting of the wing, controlling muscles and stuff like that that allows them to change direction. Because it's probably more like a bat wing where it's just small little tiny movements that allows their current to change and stuff like that. Though a bird does that as well, but it's with the feathers and stuff. And their confirmations are completely different. The pony is down on all fours. The dragons, for the most part, are walking on their hind legs. And the roll of the tail. Mm. The dragon's tail is much more of a rudder in flight than a pony's tail. So there's a lot of control with the tail. Yeah. I was just actually thinking the opposite in my head because birds have tails and bats don't. But this is the exact opposite of that. The dragons have tails and ponies don't. Good for flying because the pony's tail is just... Is mostly hair. There is bone structure in there. But because of the overall design, it's not really going to be used in the same way that a dragon's tail would. Kind of think of it like an alligator's tail when they're swimming. That does make a lot of sense. And like you said, I really like Smolder. They're doing wonderful things with her. And I'm wondering if she actually liked the pillow, because it wasn't really girly, but it's a throw pillow, which is feminine by nature. And it was kind of a cute design, so I think she may have still like, I, mean, I like this, I'm probably going to keep it, I'm not going to use it, but I'll probably keep it. And then poof, if you look at her, especially she, she kind of goes, darn it. It was a nice design, because it was the wing design. Also, I love that thing of Twilight being able to sneak up on Spike, because you know what, what I'm like when I get in an embroidery groove. <laughs> Said no dragon outside the dragon lands ever. <laughs> well, in the dragon lands ever. I get that way myself when I'm doing art. I can get into the groove and the world completely disappears except for the um, drawing I'm working on. And then Ember's like, ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, yes. It's one o'clock in the morning. Why aren't you in bed? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you have work today. <laughs> Don't you mean tomorrow? No. Remember I said it was one o'clock? You have worked today. You have to be up in four and a half hours. Yeah, that can happen to me sometimes. Also, I liked how Smolder and Spike got the truth out of Sledge. That was a great setup. Yeah, we're moving out. What? Yeah, I found you guys this great cave. Even the rocks are uncomfortable. I love the delivery from those two. It was so smooth. It's not that fake kind of delivery that you get a lot in these scenes. Where, oh yeah, this is what we're doing. A wink. No, it was solid. It was totally solid. Yeah, because sometimes they do that for kids. For some reason, even though it would totally give away what they're trying to do, they're playing it up as, oh yeah, we're doing this thing. But no, this was just straight as a as a... I was going to say as an arrow, but if you ever watched one of those things fly. Yeah, they flex. 
getting the correct spine stiffness for your arrow is very important. So yeah, they were they played that thing so straight. I was like, I almost believe them. I'm like, they could possibly be, you know, Spike could possibly be serious and it could just be Smolder plotting. It was very nice of Smolder to be able to go, so tell me everything he's been telling you. Yeah, dragons are rude and rebellious, but not like this. Also, Spike not wanting to go back to the Dragonlands. He has friends in the Dragonlands now because he's friends with Dragonlord Ember. Not to be confused with Pony Ember. Mine is technically first. For two reasons. One, I had the name on this podcast before Dragonlord Ember was shown on MLP. And two, go back to the Gen 1 pilot. First five minutes. Not my coloring, but she is there. <laughs> but other than covering up my... F Here's the thing. When I was covering up my face, it wasn't for cringe reasons. I would have paused it for that, but just we both wanted to kill him. He sounded, you know, when he was doing that, well, now, my boy, he sounded very Fred Flintstone, but not as in Fred Flintstone as in, you know, someone who's hardworking and honest, but Fred Flintstone when he's trying to pull something past his wife, or more like Yogi Bear or Top Cat or Snagglepuss, you know, the ones you know are tricksters. Mm-hmm. And I brought up that point because I was like, he sounds a lot like Fred Flintstone to me. <laughs> and like, not, not the personality, but the way he was phrasing things. Also, that song was okay. It sounded better in the reprise when Spike was singing it. Well, Sledge was really making it up as he went. I also think that the voice for Sledge didn't... Sledge? Now I've got you doing it. The voice for... Sludge doesn't quite work for even the talking singing. It just didn't feel right. The cadence to the way he was doing stuff felt off. But we're used to hearing ponies sing, who are a little more harmonic. Mm. So we also have a contrast there between the pony lifestyle and what he's portraying the dragon lifestyle to be. Because basically the whole song is, hey Spike, you're whipped. Mm. Yeah, you know, look at all this stuff they've got you doing. Look at all this junk you have. Give me all this junk and I'll get rid of it. Like, this this horde just does not work. I'm like, uh, a horde of books works very well. Have you never heard of bookworms? Or Paper Masters? Another series I like. I need to, like, read the manga sometime. Because it, like, is completely different and it's more along the lines of what the second series is about compared to the movie. But I digress. The episode was enjoyable and the ending was worth it. Going through all of that, it's just that even though it revolved around him, it didn't really ruin the episode that much with the way he was. No, because he he needed to be a sleazy jerk. That was kind of the point. But sometimes they pull off sleazy jerks where it kind of just takes away the episode. I'm thinking of one particular pony <laughs> <laughs> who's related to a very nice pony. You really shouldn't have a relative like that. But I could watch the episode again. And I wouldn't cover my face this time. I could actually watch it this time and not have the same first initial reaction. So it's not something that wouldn't prevent me from watching the episode again is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't one of those total cringy ones. And I'm usually more cringe prone than Lux. And I was fine. I was just like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, oh, here's the obvious one for anyone who wasn't catching on beforehand. So anything else you want to go over, or should we wrap things up for this episode? Oh, I liked it the ending with Spike saying, oh, I know my family is They're right here. I love Twilight. It's just, just has to double check. She's like, you mean me, right? Because <laughs> she's been really hurt this episode. Because it's something she's always worried about with Spike. And... That's why they let Spike follow the Great Dragon Migration and why they follow him. So it's been a recurring theme. It's hard for Twilight to let go. Very much so. And not just a Spike. It seems to be a, a recurring theme with her overall. It's hard for her to let go of something that she gets really attached to, like her brother. Or her premier student. Also, why don't they just go and ask Celestia? 
or the instructors at the school for gifted unicorns because it was part of her entrance exam. So how did those unicorns get a hold of a dragon's egg in the first place? Because mm -hmm. Celestia wasn't there. Celestia mm. saw and then came in. Mm, good point. Like, like, why don't they go and ask the school, where did you get this egg? Can we have the records, please? Because he's a living being, and obviously he is more than just a test. And because Twilight wasn't under Celestia's wing yet, this wasn't a setup of getting the future princess of friendship, her animal companion. Also, apparently back when this whole test thing, like, was every student given an egg, or was it just this one egg? And they've been, like, testing everyone with this one egg and nothing ever happened until Twilight? Yeah. I hope they answer this next season. It's not just where is Spike's parents. It's why did his egg end up in the school? Why were they using it for a test? <laughs> I don't care if you have to retcon in the answer. Give me one. <laughs> yes. Preferably a good one. Mm -hmm. The thing about a good retcon is you don't care that you know it's a retcon. Cadence and Shining Armor are great examples of this. <laughs> we know they are retcons start to finish. I don't flipping care. Because they are both awesome. These are not tears. Liquid pride. <laughs> also, this day aria. Oh, yes. Though technically Cadence doesn't sing that. She sings part of it, doesn't she? She does, because they have the contrast false Cadence, true Cadence. Which is crazy. You listen to that and you find out that information, you go, they put more effort into the song than they did the actual episode? Dang, Daniel Ingram. And I'm totally okay with this because I love the song. This day's going to be perfect. The kind of day I've dreamed since I was small. Nice. <laughs> and I think that's probably a good spot to... Stop, yes. Thank you, you beautiful audience. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic. Season 8, Episode 24. Father knows beast. Also, nobody will get this, but I have to. And dad comes for everyone. <laughs> Best misheard phrase ever. Here's a hint. Play the game Fire Emblem Awakening on your cell phone. That's one particular character. <laughs> that was interesting. Lux always records his outro first, and then I do mine, and then he goes, Yeah, I'm using yours. <laughs> so you're probably hearing my voice right now. Thank you for watching all the usual like, subscribe, comment. Yes, we have read all the comments. No, we haven't taken time to respond to everybody. Sorry about that. But we are still reading them and we do enjoy that people are interested enough to take the time to comment because hitting the like button is great and it's really helpful, but we know that takes like three seconds. Writing a comment, that, that took you some effort and we appreciate that. When you're ready to leave YouTube, we've got lots of links. There's links to Lux's art, Lux's Patreon, Lux's coffee. I stole a section of his Tumblr. I've been working on some Starbucks menu hacks because I like saving money. And I also like coffee. Both the actual Java and the internet coffee system. It's really fun to use, actually. So, yeah, thanks again. Enjoy. Have fun. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.